Yo, 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 yo. If that sounds interesting, this is episode 12 of Steam Dumpster Diving. All right, I am very happy to announce that Bloodborne is finally on PC. Kind of. After, I believe, a year of dev time, creator Lilith Walther just finished her PlayStation 1 Bloodborne demake. And my understanding is that it's just the first area of Bloodborne, but recreated with PlayStation graphics. I am very, very curious to see how this plays. If you're on Soulsborne Twitter at all, there's a decent chance you may have already seen this, but I still think the majority of people don't know this game exists, and it deserves way more eyes on it than it has. So, yeah, let's play it. First, you'll need a contract. This is so cool. Oh, they actually have character customization. I didn't think they'd bother. All right, what voice do I want? <laughs> oh, it looks so cool. Oh, you have to use the D-pad. Oh yeah, there wasn't a thumbstick for the PlayStation 1. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, this is sick. The little 3D objects. Man, dude, I miss when games did this. Crunchy audio. Oh, I got the backside? That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, mechanically, this is basically Bloodborne. Right, let's save. Checking memory card. Beautiful. The vibe that PS1 era graphics kind of creates actually fits Bloodborne surprisingly well, the more I think about it. I like the shift to a fixed camera perspective for shots like this. Oh, do I need Insight to open this? I like that idea. Locking doors behind Insight, like um, like it's Mario 64 or something. Um, um, I don't remember this from the game. Die, die, die. I'm not even sure where I am right now exactly. Cause the layout was changed in like a bunch of little ways. Yeah, like what the heck is this? Oh shit. Oh my God. Managed to make those guys just as terrifying in the demake. I love this. What a cool vibe. Also, we have all these doors in here now. Unlock transforms. Oh, okay. Weapon transformations unlocked. In the pause menu, press L1 to transform your R weapon. Wait, what? <laughs> I mean, I guess that makes sense. That's kind of funny. All right, let's transform it. That's cool. You know what? I think that's actually really funny. I like that. Oh God, dude, the frame rate's chugging. It went from 20 FPS to 10 FPS. Wait, is the game like emulating the hardware struggling? Oh, I got the visceral. Yes. <laughs> it feels good in this game too. This is just a fun time. I'm really enjoying this. Okay, wait, hold on. I, okay, wait, 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 wait. There's so many loading screens. It's authentic. Wait, this house is way bigger. This is usually the door that leads out of the house. Oh, please tell me Eileen's here. <gasps> she is. A hunter, are ya? Hunter. Look at this guy. He's great. I really like uh, the way the water was done. The way the water just like one moving texture. It, it actually works. It works. Yeah, like look at this. It's like poison area added to the sewers. This is entirely new content. Yo, that's awesome. An actual just double barrel shotgun. Oh, and you gotta reload it yourself too. That's cool. All right, is the pig in the game? Yes, it is. <laughs> Give me the juicy back sub. Yep. Just like old times. <laughs> what? Wow, this is... This is so much more hazardous than the original game. He's wave dashing. He's fucking wave dashing, fuck. Wow, I love how useful <laughs> the monocular is. Hell yeah. Oh, this version of the song is so good. There we go. Oh, I can give them my hats. This is a fine look or this is a foul look? This is a fine look. Wow, this is a foul look. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. A dog rat? Oh my god. All right, I think it's finally time. Finally at the end. Be sorrow the shop. 
perfect. There we go. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Looks so good. Let's listen to the music. Yo, low key, this goes harder than the original version. There we go. Oh man, this is just making me smile so much. The night grows deep. Is that not the end? No, no, I recognize that sound. No, 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 no. Please don't tell me you put that in the game. They did. It's in the game. Oh my god, it's in the game. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh my god. Is that a pig? It's a pig dog. It's a pig dog. Please don't see me on the ladder. Please don't see me on the ladder. Oh my god, it can see me on the ladder. <laughs> Just go. Just go. Oh god damn it. It grabbed me through a fucking wall! Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit. Gilbert's estate. Okay. Oh man, Gilbert, I hope you're okay, buddy. Oh shit, what the fuck? Oh man, is he like strapped to a chair? I'm sorry, buddy. Oh no, if he gets out, I'm fucked. Oh, he's out, he's out. <laughs> oh fuck. This is so fucking cool! What is this?! What is what's happening? Oh, I got the visceral! Yes! I'm sorry, Gilbert. Fantastic. Before I finish, I did notice a cheat code menu in the options. So I'm gonna mess with that real quick. All right, top heavy. Wonderful. Why doesn't every game have this? Yes, you can. Friendly dogs mode. Oh, look at the dog. He's just sitting there. He's just sitting there all nice. Aww. What a good feature. <laughs> Man, what a great fan project. The creator Lilith did such a great job. I was expecting a pretty bare bones experience going in, you know, with it just being PS1 Bloodborne and the gimmick of the visuals being the whole thing. And don't get me wrong, that's really great and super authentic and fun, but it's really elevated by all the extra areas that were added, like the extra boss, the extra enemies. There's a lot of love that went into this and yeah, as far as fan projects go, this is one of the best ones I've ever played. If you're a fan of Bloodborne, seriously check this out. It was so fun going through this and noticing all the changes as I went along and being like, oh, this is a new area and oh, I don't remember this being here. And also just like, you know, seeing cutscenes and stuff recreated. Fantastic. All right, next up we have Hardland. I had a few people comment and recommending I try this, and the general vibe seemed to be not exactly a Souls-like, but a very, very weird game with a dodge roll. And at the end of the day, that really gets to the heart of what this series is about. So yeah, let's check it out. I'm a, I'm a fox, apparently. <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> this fox has a dodge roll? Holy shit, dude, these character designs are awesome. Any game that lets me knock things off a table, thumbs up. Oh, I'm... I'm this guy now. Captain! What are you doing, Captain? You're just T-posing on the mast. Dude, this game actually looks so good. And you can sneak around. <laughs> I like the animation. I'm too tired to dodge. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Shit. This is a very weird game. Like, I'm kind of just running around pretty aimlessly. I love this fucking knight. Look how cool he looks. It's Jorma. It's famous streamer Jorma985. See, one of the things I'm noticing is that like the vast majority of NPCs don't do anything. They just kind of like just say one line. You can't interact with them further. But like some of them don't. And there's no way to distinguish between them. It's how you fight, by the way. You just got to run in and then just like weave back out. Look at how slow my stamina comes back. Look at that. I did it. I will say, I do like how the items kind of just like plop out and they're actual physical objects with physics. 
Like, here, look, I can open my inventory and just, like, throw all this stuff on the ground. Like that. Like, that's fun. That's fun. Hey, I'm getting uh, chased by skeletons. You wanna help me, buddy? You wanna help with that? Nope, I guess not. Does anyone wanna help with uh, skeletons? Anyone? No reaction? This is a bummer. No one cares. Like, every NPC is just kind of like an empty husk. <laughs> so much for a dodge roll. Doesn't even do anything. Don't talk to me, peasant. You're not a wolf. <laughs> Holy shit, look at that thing. Look how cool it looks. <laughs> I got him. What the fuck? What? Did I go inside of him? Why is this a feature? Why is this a thing? Dude, I want to like this game. I want to like this game so bad. This is so weird and cool. Cool. Man, games like this absolutely break my heart. You can really see the effort and passion shine through when it comes to crafting this world and all the great designs for the characters in it. Seriously, a lot of this game looks just fantastic. And there are moments while playing where a really cool or weird idea would pop up and make me just laugh or smile. But as a whole, this is a game that feels empty, sloppy, and aimless. Playing this felt remarkably similar to wandering around an abandoned MMO, and I'm stuck here wondering how it turned out like this, and who is this game for? Maybe I'm missing something, but I gave this game a solid few hours, and the experience I had was so strange and inconsistent that I can't imagine recommending it to anyone. This is one of those really unfortunate cases where if there was just a bit more direction and substance to the gameplay, Play, it probably could have been a hit. Alright, next game is Achilles Legends Untold. It's not out yet, but I was invited to try the demo for this game, and it seems like they definitely had me in mind because the Steam page itself refers to this game as a Souls-like. Part of me is a little worried when the Steam page itself actually uses the term Souls-like, like in the description. Uh, I feel like I haven't had the best luck with that, but I don't know, we'll see. Troy will burn. Yeah, so I can like do a little step. I can also do a full roll. I guess he just explodes. Wait, shit, can I heal? So... Yeah, drink the essence. Oh. Ow, fuck. Well, the second enemy in the game killed me, so that's not great. Souls retrieved. Okay, they literally have uh, that, and they call it souls, got it. Side quest, kill the scorpion. Oh. Um. Um. Okay. I'll try. Just run behind him. Ow. Yeah, I don't know. It's, um. It feels a little underwhelming so far. I mean, I don't know. I think this game looks pretty, pretty decent. Like, visually. Okay, so. Don't know what killed me there. All right, let's let's rest at the bonfire. The shield throw move sounds pretty fun. Oh, here we go. Is it boss time? <laughs> okay. All right, let's try out my my new throw move. How do I how do I do it? Again. Okay, the throw move. He can just dodge it super easily. Drink. Grenade. Jesus Christ. Again. There we go. Wait, kill or spare? His fate is in your hands. Uh, uh, kill. Alright, no sound effects. I'm locked into the bad ending now. Fuck. Okay, I just gotta say this. Of all the games to put, like, a kill or spare mechanic in, raiding the city of Troy during a war, like, seems very inappropriate. Like, this is where I'm gonna draw the line, this is where I'm gonna spare him, really? Die, skeleton. Oh my god, that one's fast! Yeah, okay. Um, hmm. I mean, yeah, they're... There sure are a lot of skeletons. This sure is, uh... This sure is gameplay. Man, dude, the fucking AI and pathfinding is really bugging, huh? I mean, this seems like the strat. You just get one hit in and, like, backstep. That's kind of how you have to do it. 
Yeah. Right, let's try out the parry move. Okay. That was it. Okay, see, I parried him right there, but he instantly rolled out of the parry. This one story has come to an end. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I hit the end of the demo mid-boss fight? So the game still isn't releasing for a few months, but if the demo accurately reflects the experience of the full game, it's going to be a pretty hard pass for now. I just did not have fun with it. But I want to try to be constructive here because it's still in that pre-release feedback stage. So first of all, Greek mythology mixed with Dark Souls is a cool idea. I think you actually have your niche already carved out for yourselves, and... If the co-op actually works in the full game, I think that'll definitely increase the fun factor. However, I think this game's biggest issue, aside from the obvious bugs, is that it can't decide if it wants to be a pure hack and slash or something more slow-paced and methodical. It keeps jumping between the two, and I don't think it does either particularly well. At the end of the day, I think this game still has potential, and while it failed to pique my own personal interest, I really hope the devs can turn it around and, you know, maybe I'll come back to it. But in its current state, not really feeling it. Curse of the Dead Gods. If you're deep in the action roguelike sauce, you may have heard of this one already, but I've personally seen barely anyone talk about this game. I originally played this just for fun, with no intention of covering it in a video, though I think it's actually soulsy enough to justify its inclusion here. You play as an explorer, venturing into a cursed temple, and you have to parry and roll your way through loads of enemies and bosses as you continue going deeper. This game has a very strong sense of style with its art direction, and I think what they went with is pretty fitting given the brutal nature of the gameplay. The main unique hook here is, as the title might imply, curses. As you progress through the dungeon, you're constantly building up corruption. Every level you complete raises this corruption meter, and getting hit by certain enemies raises it too. And then, every 100 corruption points gets you a new curse, which is a semi-permanent debuff you have to deal with for the rest of the run. It's worth noting though that these are generally the fun kind of debuffs where instead of simply getting weaker, they change the way you have to play and approach fights. For example, there's one that causes enemies to explode after dying, and there's another that extinguishes fires from nearby light sources when you get hit. And side note, this is a pretty big deal because the entire game revolves around light, with you taking a lot more damage in the dark. This is also coupled with the game's economy. The end of some levels will have these shrines that allow you to purchase things like extra stats or new weapons if you have enough gold. But here's the cool part. You can get any of these rewards without paying gold if you instead pay with your blood and raise your corruption level in the process. Thus, the game becomes this interesting balancing act of making sure you're strong enough while also being careful not to build up too many curses, since if you hit the fifth and final curse, your health constantly drains for the rest of the run. The biggest critique I've seen of this game are that it's very punishing and it has too little variety between runs. And yeah, I'd mostly agree with both. That being said, I was totally okay with how punishing it was because the game itself never felt unfair, and I thought there was at least enough variety for me to put in 20 hours to fully beat the game with the final final boss. Any roguelike that holds my attention to the very end is worth mentioning. So yeah, if you want a challenging action roguelike that's vaguely soulsy with satisfying combat and a bunch of cool ideas, check this one out. Next up, we got Animus Revenant. For those of you that remember the very first episode of this video series, I actually already played Animus Standalone, and that was a mobile game that was ported to PC, and it definitely felt like it. I think the same thing is true this time, with it also being a mobile game. So my expectations are honestly pretty low, but, you know, it's been a few years. You never know. Maybe this one's a lot better. Let's check it out. It's got normal attack and strong attack. Let's check out the dodge. <laughs> okay. Oh, I see it as you, my fellow unremembered. Unremembered is such a funny term, because like you can tell it's taken straight from souls, you know, like you're hollow, you're unkindled, and they're like, how can we twist this, you know? Unkindled, unremembered, mmm. I like how ridiculous the numbers already are. Like this is the starting gear for the game, and my starting armor has 3,365 physical defense. Like why? Where do we go from there? <laughs> oh my god. I have 1,120 poise. <laughs> oh, I parried him. Yo, I parried him with the axe. <laughs> you know, I do have to say, it is pretty funny how closely uh, this compares to an actual Souls game in the way you just kind of can run around them and backstab them. All right, I'm starting to notice a pattern here with these really long stretches of just 
linear kind of hallway type level sections with the same exact enemy copy pasted over and over. You gotta have something more than that. Oh, here we go. This guy seems cool. Is it a shovel? Oh, it is a shovel. Sick. Dude, Shovel Knight did not take the break up well. Wow, they're really, uh, they're really dumping a lot of enemies now. <laughs> There's so many enemies. Am I dead? Oh, no. Oh no, I'm stuck. No! <laughs> okay, you can't see them right now, but there's like 30 enemies off screen and they're closing in. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. I aggroed the boss, but the enemies from the level that I ran past are still coming into the boss room. They're still coming in. So wait, you actually can't skip the enemies. Like, they never de-aggro and they will all follow you into the boss room. This game is making me want to go take a nap. <laughs> what the fuck is that move? Oh my god. What is this? What? What is this Solaire? What? And again, I can't actually really fight this guy because I made the mistake <laughs> of running past all the enemies. So yeah, this game really forces you to fight literally every single enemy. I I'm done. I'm done with this game. Putting the whole tedium of going through the levels aside, uh, this is a really, really just joyless game. So yeah, no, not for me. All right, next up we got Source of Madness. I saw this game in the trending section for the Souls-like tag on Steam and decided it was finally time to check it out. It says it has a Lovecraftian inspired world powered by procedural generation and AI machine learning. I'm not sure exactly what that means in this context, but that sounds pretty wild. So let's check it out. Already looking pretty interesting. Okay. I can see the Lovecraft influence a little bit. Ooh, okay. Cool little teleport dash. Okay, so in this game, you equip rings as weapons, it looks like. Oh my god, the way these things move around. They're just little, like, blobs of, like, physics. Something about, like, the art in the backgrounds of this game feels like AI generated. You know, like, if I went onto that one website where you, like, type in a word and it AI generates it. Like if I typed in AI generated chapel, this is kind of an approximation of what I'd expect. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Like I think this is genuinely a pretty cool look. The designs of these creatures are so fucking insane. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. D dash. Yo. I'm just button mashing. It's working though. Oh, what is this? Ugh. What the fuck? That's so trippy. Man, I love these guys. It looks so cool. Okay, maybe if I if I just stand in the doorway. He can't get me, maybe? Yeah, here we go. What the f Oh no! Oh no! Oh my god, no! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh no! I oh. Okay, so the gameplay at this point seems to mostly be running around, getting the enemies caught on like parts of the environment while you kite them uh, and like shoot them with range attacks. I'm hoping it expands a bit more from that, but that's pretty much where we're at. Did I die? Oh no, oh no, what the fuck? 17,000 health though? Bro, I do like 10 damage per hit. Damn, this is, this is actually wild. What in God's name? Just a reminder, this isn't a boss. This is just a normal enemy I just came across in the level. Third gate. Okay. Uh, am I going to the moon now? I, <laughs> I'm on the moon. Dude, like... <laughs> the visuals of this game are hurting my brain. No! Uh, there I go. Okay, I was wondering why I was finding the same rings over and over again. It's because you have to unlock all the other ones. Oh, and I unlocked the ability to heal. Okay, <laughs> that would have been nice. Yeah, no, this is actually really cool. 
So when I made that comment about the art looking AI generated, I apparently wasn't far off because the Steam page itself says the game has an AI assisted art style. AI generated art with procedurally generated enemies sounds like a truly awful idea in most cases, but it fits incredibly well when trying to evoke Lovecraft and all the otherworldly weirdness that comes with that. And while I think this combination is fantastic and results in one of the coolest looking games I've seen in a while, it unfortunately comes at the expense of the gameplay. Procedurally generated tentacle monsters that flop around can only be so engaging and the gameplay loop boils down to kiting these monsters with ranged attacks while they get stuck on parts of the environment. And that's assuming you can even see them or tell what's happening because most fights are just chaotic messes of color where you can easily lose track of where you are or what's damaging you. This is kind of an issue for a roguelike, a game genre that revolves around permadeath and usually tight controls. But with all that said, this game is still a fun time. I'd actually recommend it to people interested in the spectacle that it presents even if the gameplay has to necessarily suffer to achieve its artistic vision. I'd honestly love to see more more avant-garde stuff like this. Alright, next up we have Pharaonic. I had a few people comment recommending this one to me, saying it's a pretty decent 2D Egyptian-themed Souls-like. I don't think I've played too many games set in Egypt, so that part sounds kind of neat, but yeah, let's check it out. Alright, so I can I can roll. We have a stamina meter. It's looking good. I got kind of like a in-place evade. Right, can I parry now? I can. I can pray. Okay, I guess this is the bonfire. Alright, shot parry. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, this game works. It's functional. Okay. So far, the fundamentals are solid. Um, I just hope it evolves from here. Oh, shit, I got parried. <laughs> okay, gotta worry about that. I don't know, I'm getting, like, mobile game vibes from this. It just feels a little too basic. Is this a mobile game? I'm gonna look it up after. Cause this feels like, honestly, it probably could be. The Warden. I think I'm just gonna roll through him every time and that'll probably work. Yeah. I think that is working. <laughs> Got a line of four guys. All right, this is the conga line fight. Am I gonna die to a parry? You know, that feels really bad. Dying in a game like this because the enemy parried you. What even killed me? <laughs> I was completely behind him and he killed me. Yeah, you know, I think... I don't know if I feel like playing still. This is just like such a slog. You know, there are a few games I play every now and then and like the first word that comes to mind is just slog. This is a slog to play. I saw some Steam reviews with like 20, 30 plus hours. So maybe this is like a really long game that maybe gets more interesting, more in depth. I don't know, but yeah, I've been playing for like a decent chunk at this point and it's it's just not clicking with me. I don't, I don't think I keep going. Has this ever happened to you? Are you a cleric or something? Ah, <laughs> oh, gosh dang it, he's gonna know I'm a cleric. Unless... Nah man, I'm a knight. This is roughly how NordVPN works. In addition to increasing your privacy online, it allows you to hide your IP address and make it appear like you're from whatever country you want. This lets you get around region locks for things like streaming sites, so you can watch way more movies and shows than you'd usually have available. NordVPN also comes with its NordLynx technology so that your connection remains fast throughout this entire process. If this all sounds useful, click on the link in the description, nordvpn.com slash ironpineapple, and with that you can get a two year plus one month plan for 70% off with a 30 day money back guarantee in case you change your mind. Thank you again NordVPN for the sponsor and and thank you for watching. Also, since you apparently made it to the very end of the video, here's a little bonus. I got this art commission recently and I think it looks fucking awesome. So, yep, that's it.